If all the devils are chained during the month of Ramadan, how come people continue to commit sins? And I do agree with you, this is a common question. And I remember several years back when I was in school and when I heard this hadith that the devils are chained in the month of Ramadan, immediately the question that came to my mind and the question that comes to many Muslims' mind and many non-Muslims is that if the devils are chained, then how do people, how do human beings yet commit sins? This question is based on the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu which I mentioned earlier, a Sahih hadith of Musnad Ahmad, volume number two, page number 230, hadith number 7148, which is also repeated in Sunan Nisai, chapter number five, hadith number 2106, where the beloved prophet said that, O oh, people, the blessed month of Ramadan is approaching. And Allah has ordained for you that you fast in this month. And the gates of heaven will be open in this month and the gates of hell will be closed. And the devils will be chained. In this month is a night which is better than a thousand months. And a person who is deprived of the blessing in this month is truly a deprived person. Now when we give this hadith, it clearly mentions that in this month of Ramadan, the devils will be chained. And it's a logical question. If devils are chained, then how do human beings yet commit sins? To make the people understand, we have to realize that when the devils are chained, it does not mean that the devils are slain. They have been killed. They are yet present, but they are chained. They are not killed. The power is yet there, but it is diminished. For a better understanding, I'd like to give you an example that when there is a lion or a tiger who is free, there are high chances that he may kill you. Your life is in danger. But the moment that tiger or that lion is chained, you are safe. You are safe as long as you maintain a safe distance. After the tiger has been chained, if you come too close to him, there are chances, yet you can be killed. So as long as you maintain that distance from the tiger who is chained, you are safe. Similarly, in the month of Ramadan, if you maintain a safe distance from the Satan, you will be saved. And if you read the Quran, Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 168, be careful of the khutwa to shaitan, of the footsteps of the devil. For he is to you an avowed enemy. Many places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that be careful of the footsteps of the devil. Allah doesn't say that be careful of the devil. Because a normal Muslim, an average Muslim, who has average iman, when he sees the devil in front of him, he will be careful. For example, suppose there's a young girl who comes to an average Muslim, a young boy, who has average iman. If a young girl comes and tells him that let's spend the night together, that Muslim will say, spending the night together with a girl? It's haram. It is zina. He will immediately object. But that same girl, if that girl phones that young boy and speaks to him on the phone, the boy will say, speaking to a girl on the phone? There is no problem. So he speaks to the girl for a few times on the phone for a few minutes. Later on, the girl says, let's go and have some snacks in McDonald's on Kentucky Fried Chicken, having snacks for a few minutes, for half an hour with a girl in McDonald's, no problem. So he goes and has snacks with the girl in McDonald's. Later on, the girl says, why not have dinner in a restaurant? Having dinner with a girl in a restaurant for a couple of hours, no problem. Then the girl says, why not spend the night together? And then the boy says, spending the night together with a girl, no problem. So this is khutwa to shaitan. Footsteps of the devil. This is not mentioned in the Quran, this is just my own example. So what Allah warns us is that be careful of the khutwa to shaitan, the footsteps of the devil. If the devil comes directly in front of an average Muslim who has iman, he will abstain. He will run away from it. But the khutwa to shaitan, 
are the things which are dangerous. So, what we have to realize, when the devil is chained, his footsteps are restricted. So many of the sins are prevented. But if we go close to him, then the chances that we'll be overtaken by the devil and commit a sin are very high. So what we have to be careful, that in Ramadan, if we keep the distance, then the chance of committing sin is less. But if we go close to the Satan, even though he's chained, like how a tiger can walk even after he's chained, same the devil. So this is my understanding. And the beloved prophet said, the devils are chained, the devil can yet move. But less distance, so if we keep the distance, we'll be safe. The second reason that I feel is that in the month of Ramadan, though the devils are chained, we fail to realize that the balanced 11 months, they are free. And the impact that the devil has on the human beings for these 11 months, it leaves those impact, that impression in the month of Ramadan. To give a better understanding, I always give the example that there are drug peddlers which try and get customers, the youngsters from the colleges, from the universities. So what they do initially, they give the drug free. And they entice the youngsters for having drugs. Later on, after some time, they charge a nominal amount for that drug. Later on, they charge an exorbitant amount. But by the time, the youngster is already hooked on to the drug. So even if the drug dealer is not there, they will try and find where the drug dealer is. They will go out of the way to find him and get the drug. And many of them, even if the drug peddler, the drug dealer is imprisoned by the law, they will go out of the way to find someone else. They may go in a chemist shop and buy mandrix, whatever it is. They are so much hooked on to it. So these people who have become addicts to drugs, or rather say, addicted to the Satan, even though the Satan is imprisoned, the effect is yet there. So this we understand as a drug dealer, as a drug peddler, even after he goes, the drug addict gets accustomed to that drug. So we human beings, we are accustomed to the sin. And even though the Satan is imprisoned, we keep on committing these mistakes. But mainly those people who have become addicts fall in this category. So those who do major sin fall in this category. But the normal Muslims, the average Muslims who haven't become addicted, it's easy for them to stay away from sin. And the third reason that I give is that though there are some scholars who say that in this month of Ramadan, the strong devils, the marids, they're imprisoned. The smaller ones are free. So they keep on committing mistakes. But according to my understanding, the third reason is that though the devils are chained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can yet whisper. And one of the ways the devils try and get the human beings close to them is by whispering. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nas, chapter number 114, verse number 1 to 6, Qul auz bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, min sharril wasfasil khan nas, alladhi yu wasfithu fi thudurin nas, min al jinnati wal nas. They whisper in the hearts of the human beings and they withdraw. Amongst them, the jinn and men. It's talking about the satanists, talking about the devils, who whisper into the hearts of the human beings and they withdraw. And among these devils are the jinn and the human beings. So maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has imprisoned the devils who are the jinn. But the human beings, we, are yet free. So one category of devils that the jinns have been imprisoned, but the satans are even amongst the men. That's what Allah says. Who are yet free. And yet we have to be careful of the whisper of the devil. The waswasa. This waswasa mainly is the thing that attracts towards the sin. The sins they had committed, but the chances are less. And furthermore, it's clearly mentioned in the full hadith that Allah has ordained for you in this month of Ramadan that you should fast. Only if you fast, according to me, will the devils be imprisoned. That's talking about the devils that are going to attract you. So Allah says, if you fast, Allah has ordained for you fasting. 
and the devils will be put in chains. So the devils that are after you, if you fast, surely they'll be restricted. The criteria for us to be away from the devil is to fast. If you fast with the proper niyyah, seeking the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surely the devil will not be able to entice you. And the best logical way to prove this is if we check the crime rate of the Muslim countries during Ramadan, it goes down. But if you check the crime rate of the non-Muslim countries in Ramadan, it is the same. The reason is that because they are not fasting, the non-Muslims, this devil yet has an effect on them. Because the Muslims are fasting, if not all properly, at least majority, or at least quite a large number. So because of that, the crime rate in the Muslim countries in the month of Ramadan is low as compared to the other months. But the crime rate in the non-Muslim country is approximately the same, indicating otherwise, even the non-Muslims, they will not commit any sins. But the criteria is that you have to fast properly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.